Hey everybody, welcome back to On the Glide Slope. I want to do a quick illustration of World Traffic 3.0. I'd received some questions about it in uh, the YouTube channel and on the blog. And uh, this is not meant to be a full how-to, it's also not to meant to be a full tour. But I just wanted to give some illustration because I'd had some questions about how it looks and I'd also had some questions about how it handles GA aircraft. So I thought I would uh, give a quick tour of that today. We're here at Tampa International and uh, World Traffic is sort of configured for me. Uh, already I did this ahead of time but if I go into flight setup screen and I'm not going to show you the details on all these sliders people will ask about my settings I have it set to 1,000 flight plans to generate or 10,000 I have my traffic density set to 100 percent I have 73 percent of gates with parked aircraft after sync and I have flight plan radius uh, load radius for arrival departures at 50 nautical miles. What world traffic will do is it will build inbound and outbound traffic for every airport in the database within 50 nautical miles of your arrival and departure airports. You set a specific arrival and departure airport and time. I've picked Tampa going to Peter O'Knight, which is KTPF time about now until maybe 2030. That's all Zulu time. And then you can pick regions that will either load random flights or will load based on the actual flight schedule. I'm currently set for random flights because I wanted you to see how it just sort of populates the area with the gates with aircraft. Um, uh, but it's easy enough to change. If I go over to the settings, keyboard shortcuts are important for this. I can go to enable disable regions. I can enable real traffic and turn off the cargo tabular regions. This is all part of the setup. It makes sense when you read the setup help information for the software when you get it. But then what it will do is it will load Tampa here based on real flight schedules. Pardon me, I almost had to sneeze. So I'm going to do that first. And uh, the first time you load an airport, it will build ground routes, which are basically where the aircraft go. Uh, it, your airport has to have uh, taxiways and their runways configured within WED and the more accurate the parking areas and gates are both for what type of aircraft should be there and how they operate based on winds the more accurate world traffic will be. World traffic is only as good as the data behind it so one thing I like about it is it will probably produce push scenery designers to build much more accurate taxi and flow information for their airports. Um, Tampa is pretty good you can also go onto the .org and download pre-built routes um, ground routes which I have not yet done for Tampa but uh, what this all means is the first time you load traffic for a particular airport, it takes an extra few minutes or maybe just 30 seconds to build the ground routes. But once that's done, it's saved and it doesn't have to do it again. So I've got this all ready to go. And then uh, I can go ahead and click Create Flights. And it will work for a second. And it's generating flight plans for all these different airports. And then it resyncs, and then I actually can see traffic right there. It just loaded in a Delta jet right in front of me, as you can see. And if I launch the radar, then here on the radar I have all this traffic. I can drag it into the main screen for a second. Oh, it won't pop it over. So if I zoom in, I can see traffic coming in and out of Tampa. 20 miles, 40 miles, and 80 nautical miles. So that's what's in the air right now. One thing you can do that's kind of cool is I can actually track a flight. So that flight that just departed, I can click on it and click track camera. And then it actually tracks that flight. This looks like it's a Airbus 321 out of Tampa. And it's flying the actual sit and star routes which is pretty cool. I can pick another aircraft if I like. There's a Delta flight. Track it. It's up above the cloud deck. Nice illustration of X Enviro clouds here, by the way. But we'll just go back to our airplane. So we can taxi around a little bit, see if there's anybody pushing or anything like that. And depending on the departures, things will or won't be pushing. Now, there were some static airplane that were in this scenery, including there's a southwest flight right here, which is actually parked sideways for some reason. That's actually in the default scenery. World traffic didn't build that. Uh, you can see that the models are quite good for these aircraft, and the CERT control surfaces work. So when 
flaps go down and landing gear go down, ran, landing, ran, <laughs> landing lights turn on, on and off, which is cool. Oh, let's see if we have anybody pushing or taxiing here. Doesn't look like it, not right now. So one thing that we can do is we can then build, if we want, a new flight schedule based on random, randomly generated flights which means I turn on the Autogen Flights button and I need to switch the underlying database the region to the cargo tabular region and turn off the real traffic region. Also notice that the real traffic region is a bit harder on flame, ra frame rates. Just make sure I did that correctly. Yep. And then I can recreate flights. and it will create new traffic for me now. If I look at the airport in the radar, it's already got some outbound flights, and more inbound flights. Didn't look like it built any GA stuff for me. Not quite sure why. Okay, I figured out the issue. So when I had the number of GA airport for departing traffic set to auto, for some reason it didn't create uh, traffic, it, uh, lots of traffic coming and going at uh, Peter O'Night. I'm not quite sure why that would be. But I think the lesson is just to make sure that you've got uh, some setting for how much traffic you have going from arrival and departure if you want GA traffic. So if I look at the flight setup, radar. I just set it to 200 GA departures at uh, Tampa and 500 at KTPF. So uh, that seems to be working well. Uh, while we're here, this Delta jet is starting to push. So it's kind of a neat illustration of the tug working here. I'm going to make the weather cab it because it's starting to rain here now. Uh, so that's kind of cool. You can see that the beacon lights are working. The strobe and nav lights go on at the appropriate time. Landing lights go on at the appropriate time. It's really pretty slick. The tug will back away here in a second. And then that jet will taxi on its way. So again, what I did there, I started with the real-world uh, traffic, then I went to randomly generated traffic. And these are the Bluebell uh, aircraft models, which again are pretty high quality, they work really pretty well. We should see that guy start to taxi. I think he does a 360 and comes back our way. That MD-80. Probably going through their pre-flight. Uh, lots of different liveries in the package. You see all kinds of different aircraft. I hope he's not waiting for me. What I'll do is I'll take off and we'll go see what's going on and then fly down to Peter O'Night really quick and see if there's any aircraft um, coming and going there. Should be at least a couple with 500 Departure set for the day. It builds a schedule for the entire day. There he goes. I think he does a 360 there. And that shows what it gives an illustration based on what the ground route is. Great. With this there, we now have four airplanes stacked up for arrival, which is cool. We'll have a near miss here with this guy. 737 or somebody coming in. Yep, so that's pretty cool. Another aircraft coming in behind us. 
So, if we go down to Peter O'Night, we should have some GA traffic. There's that airplane landing right down there. Okay. Let's make it daytime again. And I'm gonna make it just clear skies. Hold on a second. Okay, so flying over Tampa. It's uh, got airplane at the gates and has traffic taxiing around and landing and coming from different directions, which is cool. And if we fly over here to Pier O night, we should be able to see some GA traffic. Okay, we just flew over Peter Knight. We've got some GA traffic around here, including this airplane right in front of us. If we go back to the airplane airport. We may have some traffic coming and going. So, you know, even if you say I want 500 flights coming and going at the airport and it's a GA airport, although it looks like we do have some traffic down there. Yeah, there's somebody on departure right now I can see taking off. I can see his beacon lights and his strobe. If I make it nighttime, it'll be a little easier to see him. So that's him right there. He just took off. I can see the strobe of another aircraft down there um, getting ready, looks like. See right there, he hasn't turned on his strobes yet, but he's got his nav lights on. And they go through sort of a startup procedure. Uh, so you'll see them kind of get getting warmed up on the ramp and then going where they're supposed to go, which is sort of cool. Make it daytime again. And we'll go land. And maybe he'll be taxing by the time we land. So, uh, some total. It takes a little while to learn the settings, but they're not difficult to learn. Nope. You know, they're easy enough. And once you do, and you know what you're doing, then uh, you can configure it to uh, have as much GA traffic or as much uh, jet traffic as you like. And again, you can run real-world schedules, or you can have it auto-generate random flights. Again, my sense is that real-world schedules are a little easier on... Uh, looks like we've got two people taking off right here from 1-6. Another one waiting to go from 2-2. Now that's not very realistic, why not? Because I don't have realistic operations for this airport defined yet in terms of winds and the rest. And that's something I need to add to my to-do list. But in the meantime, maybe we can formation fly with this Cessna a little bit up here. So I would encourage you to check it out. Um, I've liked it, and uh, it certainly makes the skies full of airplanes. We'll want to see him off this window because you can't see past my head out the left window. If we can catch him, that is. Maybe faster than us. Had a little drama here. He's turning. That's the other thing is they fly, the jets fly real routes. So they're flying real SIDs and stars. And they have waypoints designed for the GA aircraft, which is cool. 
Don't think I'm going to catch him when I'm in the climb. But regardless, that's a little tour of world traffic. I believe they have a free trial. I think it's absolutely worth checking out a free trial. If you make it dark, what you'll see is that the sky is full of traffic. I've got traffic there. I've got traffic there. All kinds of ops going on at Tampa. Blinking lights all over the place. Aircraft coming and going at Tampa. There's uh, aircraft just landed at Peter O. Knight. I mean, I set it up to have 500, <laughs> to have 500 flights coming and going, so that's almost constant traffic. In fact, I can see one, two, three, four, five aircraft departing to Peter O. Knight right now. So that tells you that there's plenty of aircraft. We'll have a near miss here. Sure. In terms of these aircraft coming by. A little too close for comfort. So check it out, World Traffic 3.0, highly recommended. Thanks for watching on the Glide Slope. See how much of a forward slip we can fly here. Answer is a big one.